Hey YouTube, today we're looking at building traffic lights for Bricktown. Hey everyone and welcome to Brick Talk TV. Today we're continuing our series of episodes around the rebuild of Bricktown. If you missed any of the other episodes so far then do follow the link in the top right here and I'll put a link in the description below. Also do hit that like button if you enjoy the video or hit subscribe for future videos in this series. In today's episode we're looking at adding traffic lights to our roads. If you remember in our last episode we completed our cycle lane and left Bricktown looking like this. Today we're going to be adding four sets of traffic lights with three variations at our junctions. I've looked online for inspiration for the designs of our traffic lights. Again A4 TV was a huge inspiration alongside some of the other Lego YouTubers and I've adapted some of these techniques to make it look a little more like UK style lights rather than US inspired ones. So let's head over as always and firstly check out our build designs in Bricklink Studio. Our first crossing is going to be a traditional UK based set of traffic lights or Pelican Crossing. If you can see it consists of two sets of lights with a button control to activate the lights for those wanting to cross. It also intersects the cycle lane that we built in our last episode. Our second style of lights will be in the southern loop of our city where we have a road intersection. This time we have two poles with controls and no lights but we also have some overhanging traffic lights. One with two sets of lights to control two lanes and one overhang with one set of lights to control the flow of traffic from the side road. The final type of lights which will be positioned near the level crossing of the northern loop commonly have two sets of lights. I might need to modify the longer set to add another set of lights for the oncoming traffic coming off of the level crossing. These lights do not have any controls as a minifigure won't be able to cross here at the moment. As I mentioned in my last video I may do some modifications here in the future to change the cycle lane and be able to adapt the crossing some more to enable minifigures to cross so keep an eye out for that in the future. So those are the design plans let's head over to the Lego room now and the Lego city and get building and placing lights. So first up is the traditional crossing that intersects our cycle lane. To start with we get some 2x2 two two round bluish grey bricks and stick a 2x2 two two round tile with a hole on top of the brick and insert a 3 length axle piece. Like so. Then we take a connector with a hole at the centre and insert that into our axle. This will hold the light control box. To build the control box we stick a 1x2 yellow jumper tile into the hole and on the opposite side a 1x1 round flat silver plate. Into the bottom of the jumper we stick our controls. A 1x1 black plate and a 1x1 silver metallic plate. This signifies the button and the screen on the light controls that you see in the UK. Then we continue to build the poles by adding more axles and connector tubes. We also stick a pin with a loop in the middle in the pole and finally we top the pole with a connector that has a loop at the top. Two loop holes let us stick Technic pins in with studs on top of the holes. With this in place we can now make our lights. Taking a 2x4 black plate we then add three 1x2 jumper tiles. I'm also then going to add 1x1 one one round printed dots tile with a V on it to signify an arrow and directions of which this traffic light will be applicable. I will add these to all of my lights and this will show the drivers the directions in which the lights apply. 
Once these are added, then we add traffic light colours of transparent red, orange and green 1x1 round plates. And I stick the same coloured 1x1 round tiles on top. This forms the light and also makes sure that the lights stick out. We then stick our lights to our poles using the Technic pins. With that done, now let's repeat the build and we'll speed it up to do the second light. Now we have both our lights, let's place them in Bricktown. First of all we're going to be adding some drop curbs that allow disabled minifigures to cross the road easily. Using these curved 2x2 two two tiles we'll add these into the road and not cross the curb. Then we'll add a fence for safety and then we'll add our first set of lights. Now we need to modify the cycle lane barrier and the road, so let's remove the barrier and add some tiles to continue the road surface. Then we add our drop curb to the other side of the road, we add our fence for safety. second set of lights. So that's our first set of lights in place. Now on to our second crossing. We begin our build the same way as our first set of lights, building up the base and the pole. This time we add five connectors with axles and our usual top connector with a loop. You'll also notice that we have two controls this time on our lights to control the different crossings that will be available to the pedestrians. In the top loop this is where we add a blue technic pin with a cross connector pin. This will allow us to add more connectors to create a horizontal pole. Then we add more connectors and a connector with a central hole in and this is where we will connect the lights. To create the lights this time we take 2x2 two two plates with two loops behind. Then we add 2x2 two two jumper tiles on the plate. We will then create our lights again the same way using a 2x4 plate. Then we'll add the jumpers and all the different transparent coloured lights.
We'll then add a 3 length Technic pin sticking into the back of the 2x2 plate with the two loops and we'll stick the other end of the pin directly into the connector of the main pole. Next we repeat the process of the build but this time we add a shorter horizontal bar as it will only be going over one lane. Now the lights are created, let's add them to Bricktown. First up we add a drop curve again. Then we put our light control poles in place, followed by our lights. Then we add some fences and at this point I decided to swap our two length axle pieces that we used earlier in the build to add a three length axle piece in this light bluish grey. This I felt will give the poles some more strength and maybe stop it from sagging a little bit. Finally we're going to construct our lights for the junction near the level crossing. These will be overhead lights again but this time there will be no controllers as they will be automated. As I mentioned before, I may adapt these and the cycle lane in a future episode, but for now let's speed up the build. Now the lights are done, let's place one set in Bricktown into position. I'll place the other set after this episode as I'm still waiting for a few more pieces to be delivered from Bricklink to finish off my junction. I also think I'll need another set of lights on the longer pole which will service the traffic coming off of the level crossing. <laughs> So here's a quick flyby of our crossings now all in place. You can see the three variations that I've constructed and I'm fairly pleased with how they've come out. I think I've adapted them well to fit into my city and they have much more of a British feel than the other American style that I've seen elsewhere. In our next episode you can join me as we start to build out our bus lanes. We'll be covering the laybys for the bus by modifying the sidewalks and the road. We'll be building a bus shelter that I've used before in my previous city and we'll be using a bus sign created using custom tiles that I've ordered online. So hit that subscribe button with the bell notification turned on to be notified about when that video drops on the channel and hit that like button if you enjoyed this video so more people get to see it. And until next time, stay safe and I'll see you then.